with Jody. Uh, what did it mean for you to play Empress Natalia, such an important character in the universe? Oh, it was a real privilege and a real kind of honor. I mean, it's, you know, it's such a fun role because I think we never really know exactly what to think about her and she really keeps us guessing. But, you know, Alison's writing is so rich in layers. And I think she writes these female characters that are just such a joy for an actor. They are, you know, she's a little bit like a Tony Soprano, which I quite like um, in some ways. Um, I'm not going to commit okay. entirely to that statement. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there are aspects of, of her that I think, you know, just keep on giving. Um, so she's a fascinating character explore, to explore. And I think, you know, um, yeah, for me, it was just a thrill, really. So much fun. Now, Sarah, what can you tell me about uh, your character, Princess Ines, the heir to the Golden Lion Throne? Yeah, well, as you say, she's the heir to the Golden Lion Throne. So she's dealing with everything that comes with living the royal secluded life with traditions, expectations and and, you know, at the same time as being a young woman. Um, and uh, when we meet her in the show, she's, she's planning to go study at the Sisterhood. One of the okay. things that I fell in love with when I read the scripts uh, in terms of the character is that the fact that she isn't just portrayed as a princess, like she's also very much just a young girl and we really get to, to know her through the show. And um, yeah, I like, I, I, I was very interested in digging into the more human sides of, of her life that I could ident identify myself with as well. Chris, you play Kiran Atreides, uh, a master swordsman, a role that requires both physical skill and discipline. How did you prepare to play this side of the character? Yeah, it was uh, it was funny. I think when they released the brief and said, you know, sword master, I got a little nervous because that put a lot of pressure on me to uh, to be good at that stuff. and. Before heading out to Budapest, I managed to, I, I went and trained in some Japanese Hapkido, mainly to see how the how the, the master would train someone and about like the discipline and stuff. Um, less so for the actual fighting ability, more to see how how someone is in, in that space. And, um, and then I got to bring a little bit of that into it, but we did so much training. We were lucky to have like a month before shooting uh, to get into the fighting styles and us working together, getting, you know, getting to the point where we felt comfortable and safe with each other. But um, honestly, it's, the, it's, it's a dream job. It's something if, you know, if I could have wrote it on a piece of paper two years ago and said, what job would you like? It would be doing something like this. Okay. So I um, felt very lucky to be able to take on that challenge. Uh, Dune Pro Prophecy is set in a very complex universe full of politics, mysticism and power plays. What was it like for you to immerse yourself in this world? Did you feel the need to learn everything about uh, the world, the, the big world of Dune? Oh, that's such an interesting question. I mean, I think there's so much to take on with Dune. For me, the, the sort of um, beginning point was actually just, you know, reading a little bit about medieval queens or, you know, the Medicis and um, to get into that world, because in a way it's a more relatable equivalent. I think sometimes sci-fi can feel a little bit abstract. Um, so I just kind of went back to source material and, and stories that were about, you know, the kind of power behind the throne. Um, and that was really a, a great touch point for me. Um, just so I didn't feel like I was overloading myself mm. with sort of, you know, Dune mythology, um, because it's such an incredible, fascinating universe. But I think as an actor, sometimes you can feel a little bit overwhelmed by that. Yeah. Of. yeah. And I think the, the incredible thing was also like having Alison and George in there because they they know so much, everything about this Dune universe. Mm. And, and I, I you know, they, they always made themselves available if you had any questions in terms of backstory or, you know, just about the house and the, the history and, 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 and that was super helpful yeah. as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's yeah. also fun to create something new because, yeah. you know, we, we can't really be informed about anything about our characters from the stuff we see from the Dune movies, which are out there, obviously, you know, yeah. maybe we can be informed by tone in terms of like the kind of show we're mm -hmm. making, the cinematic feel to it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, those stories are so far ahead of us and we're, we're all in different places. So it, it was nice to be able to come in and look at the books that precede us, like doing the sisterhood and find out the backstories of our characters, which are all there and they're all pretty rich. 
So it was great building blocks along with what Alison and Jordan brought to it, you know, so. Yeah, and we're so fun. lucky with the script. I mean, yeah. so much yeah. was on the page as well. The, the scripts are so well written. I think all of the characters are really, like you really get to know them. They're so, they, they have so many sides and they're, they're very human. And I think that, yeah. I think that's what makes it real. Yeah. You know, I think if you regard the sort of mythology with too much reverence, then you end up forgetting you're playing a real person, you know? So yeah. I think we really wanted, and were encouraged to make the scenes feel intimate and truthful and real. So yeah, that was our departure point in a way. Yeah.